you have to observe the first part of this thing. <laughs> But he was acting weird. How? Ah. If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you have ah, that's a natural reaction for the victim was Chihiro. Who was a girl. No, he's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that, because up until we actually discovered the body. We couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? suspended with it was some kind of rope was it not that's right it absolutely was then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope hey byakuya where'd you get it from huh i'd never seen that rope before in my life no it's wrong Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? We really need to. We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering you. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girl's locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you?
I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. Yeah, but the pictures were switched. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. without permission? What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. Makes sense. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpet was itched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all of that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boy's locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? 
To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e handbook across the card reader device, but Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have packed her e handbook Shoot! Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have packed her e-handbook! But she was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her! No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, that's wrong! No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts glaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Is she some kind of, uh... <laughs> okay then, I vote for Byakuya! Hold on a second. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So. Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? 
There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? <laughs> well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like using our hands? <laughs> no way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's. Probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... Based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? <laughs> That's not it at all! Stop screwing around! Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. This... This girl is... Is what? Is a boy! I think you caught it. Wow. Ah, I see. So she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? <laughs> You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. And it's really true? Hero was... guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Hero Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? <laughs> but how the heck is this voice? Yoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. 
<laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Ahem. I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well... I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is... Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. <laughs> and because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room, and the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but... Yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya's the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. That's, that's what he wants you to do. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya. When you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. <laughs> this thinking... Yes. Mark it as correct. <coughs> What's up, he? Die himself. What? What? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. What the heck? Are you fucking with us right now? What? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe! Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then... Why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then. If it wasn't me, who was it? Well, 
I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Biapia did it. The beagle is Kaiki. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but... Did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No, it's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes. I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry, but why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough, so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. <laughs> oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No. You already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? 
You know who the killer is. S seriously? Huh? Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Huh? Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say. But fine. Celeste. Did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. First of all, we know where Chihiro was heading. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! I... I don't even have a tracksuit! Cause exercising sucks! <laughs> I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? We know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? No, that's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? Uh... Blue chest shirt. He said blue chest shirt. I'm not blue When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... You just... Hey, Celeste. What color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. 
then, Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? Are... Are you talking about Chihiro? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the back. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. <laughs> and after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. He was really strange. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Did you notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really... kill Chihiro? I... 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 Uh, I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah! You would never do something like that! This is a false accusation! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Okay, actually, I just thought about something. Uh, he said uh, he was bit going to meet with someone that he trusts. This would be a few cards that I don't really trust. I think they need to be careful with their time, though. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. <laughs> Insist, then. Um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Yeah. 
I got it! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed! I was totally sure I'd found it! Then it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? I got it! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah! You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! Oh my... Okay. And he was... Holy shit, he was in the song that made cold. You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. Uh. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Oh, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? Oh! He went to the song night and found out by accident. That doesn't matter. They would destroy the handbook. What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was...
さマンド、your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No, wait, hold on! You've got it all wrong! He would never kill! I don't accept this! Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! <laughs> See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! <laughs> See? Look! Makoto was wrong! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test Makoto if what he says is you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo then that proves that what Makoto... Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, it's wrong! Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything 
What you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong.
How the heck did the freaking POS get to the ghost button? Then this POS. Is he an other one of those? what happened first let's take a look back to before the incident last night Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse correct at the time she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag that something was a blue tracksuit you can confirm this right Celeste With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple, because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Jakiro, and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the blood-stained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. Can he not just use... With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that the Akuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. 
Chihiro's Handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We did it. I killed him. Bullshit. I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the Blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Unbelievable. 
Sorry. What? What is this? Now then. Actually. That's right. I want to change. That's right. Indeed. Um, certainly. But... Because... myself.
Oh shit! What the heck? This not Tesla. Well, what the hell? They is fuck, fuck up. Um, all places. Uh, uh, there's no police inside this place, so not like anyone can do. And that's him. All police. That is, that's that is fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I just... Don't fuck with me! I just... change. Mm-hmm. 
What's wrong? Damn you! I... I just wanted to... Yeah, that's right. This is not my problem. This is really... Really... Not really stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. It's just really happening. And I had to make stuff. You son of a bitch! I... I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. we made from one man to another Hey. Huh. 
However... What? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> there is nothing to be done. Interesting. this? You... <laughs> what? Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. So, maybe it's nice to get with the audience. Let us see audience. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. 
But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. Oh. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! What? My, my, you really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> If I keep thinking like that, I might decide to... Okay. Always have to do as the idiot things die. Go to bathroom and die. <coughs> what the heck? Thank you. 